Okay, so I'm going to call this meeting to order, seven o'clock. And this is a workshop for determining the ARPA uh, funding. So um, I guess we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. And Alan, I think I'm gonna ask you to do this this evening. Okay. All right. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, individual, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Okay, roll call, please. Councilwoman Wadsworth? Here. Reed? Here. Sandretto? Here. Councilwoman Gordon? Here. Councilman Mokler? Okay. Okay, so I do I, I need a moment. Moper is absent. Has, and he I did, called, okay. has he called in? No, and I don't have an email from him. Okay, well then, uh, if we don't have a reason, we can't just excuse him. We need a reason. Okay. Okay. All right, so... Um, Mr. Rainey, are you ready to um, uh, start the project list and show us what's up? Are you going to need to share your screen? Um, well, let's These see. are all in the packet. They're all in the packet. If... Well, does everybody have a copy of the, the list and the map? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. So just uh, let me, the, we have a list here of projects uh, that we've put together, uh, went through with the uh, city staff and uh, went through water and sewer projects. We had a, a list. Um, well, let's see. So there was about Six million dollars worth of projects on on the original list, and so we combined the water and sewer together and came up with the list that we <clears throat> have in front of you. And the map is the same as the list; it just gives you an idea of where the projects are located. Um, and <clears throat> I don't know if you want me to read through every project we have on here, um, but. Uh, so we, we basically have two options listed here. Um, uh, projects one through 18, we came up with for option one and then option two has those same projects, um, but we've added in the utility bill assistance for 100,000 and where the difference came up was in uh, item number 10, line item 10 was a generator project. Uh, so that's where the difference came out. Uh, and just to let you know that um, the county is providing money for small business assistance, and that's gonna be through TRIDEC. And the small businesses can apply for up to $30,000 uh, in grants. Um, and so, uh, so that's why we didn't include it in, in this uh, uh, project list or, or funding list. And from my understanding that the city had that available um, through another funding and nobody applied for it. So that's why uh, working with the county uh, in meetings, we decided to uh, just go with the county providing that assistance. And that will come through the Chamber of Commerce. And uh, TriDEC will provide uh, two people to assist on that. 
And I think the other thing that's important to tell you is that uh, the county limited our scope on this. And actually, um, I'm not sure whether they will take this extra 100,000, uh, but they limited our scope on their money to, um, to just uh, water and sewer projects. Right, and so, so talking with Adam File, the uh, working with the county, he said that the county plans to uh, exchange between one million and two million dollars with the city. Um, that's going from the city's 09 money or the RCCF funds, and exchanging them from the county's ARPA funds. And this list and the total is based off of. Um, getting $2 million from the county. And if we don't get the full 2 million, we would just start working our way up the bottom and, and taking off the projects until uh, the funding available matches our projects. Madam Mayor, may I ask a couple questions? Yes, you may. Um, when it comes to the 100,000 for the utility relief, um, have we asked Adam or anybody in the county if, if they would accept that, or is that kind of a, a Hail Mary? I think that I have not discussed it with him personally, so I don't know if he's, if it's, if he's going to be broadsided by it, but he did tell us that, that um, he wanted sewer and water projects. Right, well, that's with the, the money that they're exchanging, that $100,000 is that coming out of ours? That would then come out of the city's okay. uh, 975000 Okay. That works. So, so they, can't, they can't do anything to control what we're using our money for, that 975000 They will okay. just uh, look at what we're doing with the, the uh, money, the exchange money, if you will. Okay. Got it. Okay. And then my other question is, when does uh, when does this funding, when do the projects need to be done? Was it 2023? Is that what I remember from the last meeting? They, um, they, I don't think they have to be completed by then. Okay. I, I think, think they have to be budgeted and, and planned. Got it. Uh, for is some reason, I was under the understanding when we had met with Adam um, uh, during that that community meeting that he had said something about having a, a date for all of these projects to be done or you know a plan for them to be completed. I was just curious if we had thought about that. Right. What's your um, understanding, Alan? The the uh, the money has to be obligated by the end of this year. Okay. So that means everything has to be lined up saying that you have this much money and this, these are the projects you're going to spend it on. Um, and then I believe we have uh, until the end of 2024 to complete the projects. Got it. Okay. That was the day I was thinking of. And then one last question. Um, are we doing any other kind of uh, utility relief outside of this? Um, that might be a, a Rebecca question. Yes. Um, after I last presented to the council, um, on the 18th uh, mm -hmm. regarding the bills that and the um, resolution that we wanted to do. I went back in and ran a, a past due list. And what I came to the conclusion is that there's actually 68 accounts that are really like past due, past due, you know, like more than a month, okay. which are 60 days and 90 days. Um, and then there's still 647 that are past due with one month bill. So um, that's where I was gonna talk to council on the first is present that information. And me and Jose um, came up with the idea that for those 68 people do door hangers that are the ones that are really past due mm -hmm. and then send out notices to all the rest via mail because it's only one month. This just means that they didn't pay it by the 20th of February. Okay. Are, do we, got it. Do we know if there's any other, uh, whether it be county or whatever state funding to help in this situation? 
we were going to put the information of the CAC on. We're going to put this information of the CAC on there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That's helpful. And then we're, they're going to be in both English and Spanish. Excellent. That's great. Yeah. Okay, Rebecca, again, that CAC, is that through the county? It's, uh, isn't it community? Community <laughs> action yeah. coalition. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's in Prosser. I don't think it's through the county. I think it's a it's a uh, nonprofit organization, Community Action. Okay. Because that is a big difference in bills when you run it thirty days. There's six hundred, and so and then when you take out the thirty days of people who are just didn't pay by the twentieth, there's only sixty eight. Do you know what the dollar value is for for the difference between those? Uh, not uh, not off the top of my head. I don't. I'm not at the office. So okay, need... no no problem. I was just curious. I know it's it's probably going to be less than a hundred thousand. Okay. <clears throat> Madam Mayor, may I address Rebecca? Yes, you may. Didn't you say at the last meeting that the there was a substantial amount, like three hundred thousand total, or something? 108,000 total. Okay. Yeah. And that's with everybody that's overdue? That's everybody. That's including the 30, 60, and 90. Okay. But that was 747 accounts. We're down to 647 total. So 100, 100 accounts got paid. Um, okay. When we ran the report um, after JB did the downloads and everything for the 20th, there was about 20-something thousand that came in just for the 20th. Okay. And then uh, can I address questions, Mr. Rainey, as well? Yes, you may. Uh, so, Alan, <laughs> some of this stuff I, I understand, but I'm going to ask questions. Uh, lift station one, reline the wet well. What's going on with that? Uh, Wade has informed me that the uh, concrete is actually starting to fall apart on the inside. So um, it kind of looks like one of those those aggregate sidewalks where you can see all the, the rocks are exposed. That's what the inside of the wet well looks like, the, the cement. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, under the uh, uh, that particular concrete that was used um, is not doing well in, in the, the environment of the wastewater. And so we're trying to, uh, we want to try to line it similar to what you would do with a, a pipelining, except for in there, they would go down in and spray it. So they'd spray um, like a uh, fiberglass plastic liner around, around the, or the, I guess the interior of the walls to uh, help hold it in place. Okay. And then the well five generator, as well as the number 10 um, on your list, I assume those are all backup systems. Yes, yeah, that would that would be power to run the water uh, in, the, in the event uh, that we would have a power outage. And that number 10, so the total on that, uh, or the, the scope of the whole thing, um, well, number 10 would be generators. This is on the sewer side. <coughs> uh, number three is generator at well five. So if, we, if, if all the power goes out in town and we have a generator at well number five, we can supply the whole town with water. Right. Top down. Yeah, I get yep. that. Yep. And, and then, then number 10 is generators for the, the sewer lift stations. And the way we have it right now, in option one is it would be permanent generators at uh, lift station two and four. Those are the two lift stations at the bottom ends of all the collection systems. And those two pump directly to the uh, wastewater treatment plant. And then we also, oh, we also have a portable generator and plugins put in for the other lift stations. So two is Lower River Road, and where's floor at again? That is the new one that was put in um, at 300 Carroll. Okay. 
Yeah, that was the one we just upgraded uh, two years ago. Okay, and the Jacobs Road water sewer extension, is that going up the hill? Yeah, that would be, <clears throat> uh, we go 800 feet up Jacobs Road and then 500 feet down Fields Road to try to provide service for that uh, um, DNR land. Okay. And what was the issue on the Hope water lane? Uh, that's the water line. It's a four inch line that goes um, through the Archie Borden Park, the skateboard park, mm -hmm. and goes down and through that. Well, um, I don't know, within the last 15 years, we uh, put fill material <laughs> in the park. So now that water line is uh, in places 30 feet underground. And it's a I believe it's an old steel line, but we, the, the crew has fixed leaks on it down in Hope Lane in the past. Mm -hmm. And so um, this is one of the projects. We basically have that 90% uh, designed uh, right now. And so we just need to uh, um, go through and kind of check our plans and, and make sure we have everything in there. And it, that would be ready for bid. And that was one project that was kind of moving forward a couple of years ago. <clears throat> and we were waiting uh, for the time to do the work. And uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you are going to expand the diameter of that pipe as well. Yes. Is that yes. And, and the plan would be to run an eight inch PVC line. Uh, it would run just north of the tennis courts down along the bike path area mm -hmm. um, so that that area would stay open you know you know virtually as long as we have the the bike trail there and then we turn over and go down hope lane and replace that whole line and redo all the the services <clears throat> sorry um and then what's Legion Heights phase one? Uh, up in Legion Heights, there's an area, the whole area on Legion Heights uh, has uh, water lines that one, have frequent leaks, and two, the, um, several of the lines are in the back of the lot lines. There's an easement that runs through the middle of the block. And so if there are any major leaks on those lines, the crew is going to have to go back in people's backyards and try to fix them. And, you know, depending on where they are, around trees, fences, and anything else somebody has in their backyard. Um, and this is one thing that uh, um, Wade has talked about quite a bit in the last five years that uh, he'd really like to see that move from from the back of the lot lines out into the street to where there's access. Mm -hmm. And through that, um, I believe that whole Legion Heights, we're looking at going through phases and replacing all the, the water lines. And I believe it's, um, <clears throat> I don't have it right in front of me, but it's uh, about, um, uh, three hundred to four hundred thousand dollars is what we're estimated to do all that work, and so we're looking at it. If we can do part of it now, um, and then just kind of phase in other sections of the the improvements. Okay, and then uh, I don't see a real good drawing as to far as your loops. Um, so on your three loops that you're talking about, where are these tie-ins or how are you running those lines? Okay. So let's see, the uh, <laughs> Della Dale Avenue loop, that is at the west end. Um, that is where Della goes out to, it just has a cul-de-sac at the end. Mm -hmm. And 
uh, that's a dead end line. And that's one that uh, uh, Wade has told me they have to do some flushing on it um, to make sure that, you know, they don't get any uh, bacteria growth in the water. And so we would just basically come down the hill. Um, it's where the existing cul-de-sac is now, where King Beverage is located at. And they're extending the line of the, the water, the road and water sewer west of there. But we would tie in right there at that, that existing cul-de-sac on Dale. Okay. So that's that loop. Um, let's see, First Avenue waterline loop. Um, that is basically from uh, Alma. And it would, would come up First Avenue and wrap around, tie into Babs. And the reason for that is um, to try to give us, um, I guess, um, a more of a um, looped system in there. Because right now we just have the one line that, that goes from third down, down Babs, down to second to Alma, and then first across the bridge. And so we would be coming off at Alma and making it a little bit, uh, um, I guess, uh, uh, I guess, yeah, loop. But we wouldn't. We'd have more than two water line or more than one water line feeding that at the bridge. Then if that makes sense. <laughs> um, so are you saying that one would go down from Alma to Abbey, or are you saying the Abbey's the one that goes across the bridge right now? Oh, is it Abbey? Okay. Yeah, I guess it's. So we we'd start there, right there at the boat launch entrance area. <coughs> is that is that Abbey? Yeah. Okay. Then we'd run up and tie into uh, Babs, and yeah. so we'd have a small loop on second um and abby and babs and first we'd have a little loop there so if, because right now if something happens on second we have to shut down the water line we're shutting down the water to uh um the whole um, south side of the freeway okay so that that would be the purpose for that one um then the uh, Angeline waterline loop, that would be going from, from Angeline, that is a cul-de-sac, it's a dead end waterline. So we would be going um, east, which is down the hill to the uh, uh, Coyote Irrigation right away. And then mm -hmm. we would turn north and we would connect up to uh, the new subdivision that they're planning for the Ida Irma area. And so we, we'll have them when they, when they um, uh, do their subdivision, <clears throat> we'll have them stub it out to the uh, Kiona irrigation right away. Is that something you'd want to tie into that Hopal water line as well? Well, yeah, with, without seeing the overall map, you wonder why but they're in two different pressure zones. Okay. So the uh, Angeline is part of the upper pressure zone and Hope Lane is part of the lower pressure zone. Okay. Yeah, it, it would be nice to be able to connect that, but um, I, you know, we could look at doing something like that, but uh, then you'd be putting in a, a, a pressure regulating valve something that's similar to some what we have up by uh, um, the grocery store. So you'd be putting in a big vault and a number of valves and, and a control valve and- That's fine, I was just asking. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and then the two valves that you got listed, well number four valve, looks pretty self-explanatory, but what's the water valve replacement for 85,000? Um, that's, that's system wide. Uh, there's some valves that don't work. And so, um, 
I think we had, uh, um, I don't know, 20, 20 different valves listed. <clears throat> um, or we just, we put that number at tw or 20 um, because there, yeah, there's several valves throughout the system that don't work. They've had some problems. I believe it was up by the, uh, the laundromat at Legion Park. There was uh, uh, some kind of leak occurring and they they went to the valves that, that should have worked and they didn't um, so they had to go back out a little bit further and when they shut stuff down they affected a uh, larger number of homes so there's some valves in that area that need to be replaced and um, I know the crew knows of several more that need to re be replaced okay Thank you. Yep, you bet. And and we do have cost estimates for all this uh, broken down in detail if, um, if everybody would like to see those. I'm good. Um, Madam Mayor, my vote's for option two at this point. Okay. All right. I, uh, yeah, okay. I, I agree with Mr. Sandro. I think it's important that we use some of these funds if we can to, to help relieve uh, the utility bills. Okay. On the also, Madam Mayor, may I have a floor? Yes, you may. Okay. Um, also, with option two, if let's say, for example, we don't end up using the 100000 for utilities because CAC helps people or they decide to pay their bills. Um, I had asked Mr. Rainey to see if to see if those if we can put those hundred thousand dollars back into number 10. But that will be later down the road towards the end of the year. Okay, are there any other questions or discussion? Hearing none, is um, Mr. Reed and Jessica, would either of you like to weigh in on this? No, I, I'm also in favor of option two. Um, I guess my only question would be prior to COVID, did we have outstanding utility bills then too, just out of curiosity, or is this more onset from um, the COVID situation? Um, I don't have that information. Um, I, I can do research on the 6090s to see how far back they go and maybe um, do a, an Excel spreadsheet to see from when COVID hit to now exactly how much, who's really affected. Because I understand what you're saying, Ms. Wadsworth, that if it's not COVID related, then um, maybe assist, well, they can still get assistance through CAC for those, you know, for past due, but we can help them with their COVID part with, with these funds. Okay, Mr. Reid, do you uh, wish to? Choose an option. Um, option two. I'm in agreement with option two. Thank you. Okay. All right. I think and, that was Jake here too. Jake oh, came Jake. in at seven eleven. Oh. Okay. Uh, Jake, did you? Well, option two as well. Okay. All right. Well, that's unanimous then. So um, we'll move forward with that. And, okay. Uh, so so uh, from here we'll actually. Uh, presented again at the council meeting and we'll need to do a resolution for that uh, so we have a record of, uh, of the council's decision and then based off of that then we can start working uh, on these projects and uh, we just have to track them and do some reporting um, and I believe the first reporting is about April 1st, I believe. Um, and so 
So yeah, that'll be the path forward. And then we'll be, then once that resolution is passed, I'll send the, uh, um, our list option two uh, to the county uh, this week. But then once we pass a formal resolution, we'll, we'll send that along to the county and then uh, start working on doing the money transfer on that. So, Ms. Uh, Madam Mayor, I have the floor. Yes, you may. Okay, Mr. Rainey. So, with this, then I will start creating um, the the funds in the water and sewer accounts, so that way we can start allocating the funds appropriately oh, in there. Okay. I'll do that when I get back. All I'll right. work on that. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Well, if there's nothing else, then um, I think I will take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I, I second. Okay. All in favor? Who seconded? I heard three three voices. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Reed did. Okay. okay. <laughs> All in favor, say aye. Aye. Jim aye. Pedro, aye. Jim Buckler, aye. Reed, Buckler, aye. aye. Okay, thank you. All right, guys, I'm, I'm hitting the road here.